Hi, my name is Sandra Batakis, and I'm going to be your instructor for this course. I have spent years working with Microsoft Technologies going way back to DOS before we ever had the hopes of Windows and certainly before we ever had hopes of working through technologies like Office 365 and SharePoint sites. With this experience in seeing all of the technologies grow and not just grow but grow together, we're now at a point where all of the experience of working through Word and Excel and PowerPoint and online apps can be brought together. In my professional career, I don't just stand here and teach it. I can honestly tell you that I deploy all of these technologies to all of my customers, and I spend a lot of time not only creating content, but migrating them over, importing all the data in, and then giving it some sort of workable form to send them forward. So it is my pleasure to take not only my favorite programs and share them with you, but to also share some great ideas that I found along the way. In this module, we're going to go through an Office 365 overview for end users. If you're brand new to Office 365, as I imagine you are taking this class, we're going to introduce you to all the different components. Now, we won't have a time in this module to go through a deep dive of every single component, but the purpose and focus rather being what is it all about, what are all the tiles, and what are the different applications that we get to choose from. So we will mention how you use email, what OneDrive is all about, what SharePoint is all about, but also, and just as importantly, how they all work together. So you'll focus on getting each and every one of those applications with a little bit of meaning, and then later on in the course, we can take a look at each one of the applications a little deeper. So let's first start off with defining what is Office 365. In its simplest form, Office 365 is Outlook and Email. It is OneDrive for document storage. We have Delve and Video, which are both new. We even have something called Sway that was added. And we have SharePoint. And some of these apps literally, I can say, have been out for less than a couple of weeks. So when you look at all of these, you've got all these little apps bundled in your online community. However, if let's say you run Microsoft Project, a totally separate software package, and you decide to integrate it, you will see that you can enable Project. You can also enable a program called CRM. In fact, there's a few dozen of them, but they're all built to work directly with Office 365, its users, its email recipients, etc. So in this particular case, we're not going down that path. We're really going to talk about the core of what it is. So first off, we have Outlook. If you have Outlook installed on a local machine, you know that Outlook has email, a calendar, people, which is your contacts, and also Skype for Business. Skype for Business is usually a different application that can be installed side by side with Outlook. However, the functionality is also in Outlook where you can right click on someone in the Outlook window and actually send them an instant message. So that's different and yet integrated as well. We have OneDrive. OneDrive actually gives you two different features. It gives you web apps. I can connect online and I can write an entire paper and never actually save anything local on the computer and not have Office on the computer. So you have your Word, Word Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. OneDrive also allows you to download those desktop applications or to edit the files in a locally installed version of those applications. And of course, OneDrive is your storage. Now I say that very carefully because the storage mechanism and the retrieval mechanism for those documents technically is done in SharePoint. It just doesn't say SharePoint when you're in it, but that's the technology behind it. Online, we now have Delve. We have Video. We've even recently added something called Sway, which you may or may not have enabled for your users. And again, we'll look at each one of those separately as we do our tour. SharePoint is an online website presence where you have team sites, maybe it's per person or per department, maybe it's a company team site. We have public sites where you could actually do your entire website, and we have sites you follow, which basically are bookmarks of web pages. All of this is integrated in Office 365, and for that subscription price, 
whether you're on the smaller packages or the highest enterprise package, you will find that you have access to all of this. When you sign up for Office 365, there are home categories, there are small business categories, and then there also is enterprise categories. I thought about putting a slide up that says your packages are P1, P2, P3, small business, maybe E1, but the problem is Microsoft has been adding, changing, modifying all sorts of subscription information, and I think that really your best place to go is online to office365.com, look at products, and there's usually a link that says compare all plans. That's really where you want to go for the information because they could change tomorrow for all we know. What you do have to understand is the basis of this course is based off of the enterprise version and it is based on the E3 subscription. The E3 subscription is the Cadillac of Office 365. It has everything. But there's actually versions up there that only have the software but no email. There are also packages up there that have email and no additional software. So you really want to make sure you go up to the site and you find the link for compare all plans so that you know you're going to get what you need. So assuming that everyone is on E3, we have email, we have calendar, we have people, and if you've ever used Outlook on a computer, it's the exact same thing. We have news feeds. Now this is the interesting one because even though this is a recent screenshot, that depends 100% on how the back end of Office has been configured as to whether or not you have a news feed available to you. Also, you can replace news feed with Yammer if you have a Yammer license. And there's a new one coming out that the tile is there, but the programming is not called Enterprise Social or Social Enterprise, something along those lines where it's really pulling the news feed, the Yammer, and everything else in together. But what you're looking at here is what I'll call the Facebook of Office 365, where you're doing social engagements. OneDrive is technically your storage. It's online storage for all your documents. And within OneDrive, you can actually create the documents using your online applications. You'll find all your SharePoint sites here. You'll find your task list here, which, again, tasks are part of the Outlook suite. When you get to OneDrive, OneDrive allows you to use applications. Now, the online version of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, as well as OneNote, are not full versions. They are what I would consider 30% of the program, which is the most popular 30%. You can get up there and create very elaborate documents, but there are just going to be some features that won't be available on an advanced level that you have to install it on the local computer and use the full version. Admin is where you spend a lot of time setting up Office 365 and, and maintaining your users. If you happen to be a partner and you're linked to all others, you've got partner. I'm noticing that I'm getting a little bit messy here. So let's clean up that slide. You have Delve, which is brand new, but I find quite interesting. It's uh, I call the master recent files list who you've been working with, what you've been working with, what types of files you've been editing. They're all there for you to go back and work with. You have the YouTube of Microsoft. It's video, looks and acts very similar. And of course, if that's not enough apps for you, we always have the 365 store. Office 365 has all sorts of extras and add-ons. If you like Microsoft Project and you are a project manager, there's also Project Online for an additional cost. We also have Microsoft Dynamics CRM. This is to maintain all your customer databases, your billing, your invoicing, it's all in there. We also have Yammer. That's a third-party add-on. Yammer used to be a company all by itself, but now if you have an account on Yammer, you can actually use that account over here on Office 365 and integrate it together. What I have seen newly added, first off, is something called Delve. And when I say newly added, we're talking within the last week or two that I see it appear under our subscriptions. Delve is what I call a tile-based summary. So if you look at this screenshot, 
you will see that we have our home button and then you have me. Well, if me is active, you're going to see that recently you were looking at the Contoso proposal and you're also updating the employee handbook. So it basically presents you with the online version of what you've been working on. Now, this isn't the recent files that you have on a local installed computer with Microsoft Office. This is assuming that you're working with all these files online while logged in to Office 365. If, let's say, you are working on the employee handbook with another person, and you can see that there are other user accounts listed with these, maybe you both have permission and you're working together, then you'll find that they're also listed here. So I have a chance to click on their name, look at their profile, read the About Me, see what other things that they're working on that I might have permission to. So you don't have to understand location. It doesn't matter where the employee handbook is located, whether it's in my OneDrive or someone else's, that's a quick link to open it right back up. Also, Delve allows you to look at emails, different profiles, different documents, and you can add anything to that board you wish to add. We have also recently added video. And under video, we have an intranet website portal. I think really it looks exactly like YouTube. It is not YouTube, just to be clear. But in YouTube, you know you've got channels, you've got people posting videos, and you can play them and you can share them. You can add them into your own playlists. Exact same thing here. So nowadays, a lot of people are communicating by video. We're learning by video. We're sending messages by video. We're doing reports by video. So as we are all creating this content, we can create channels and have people browse those channels and take the training that way. So it could be executive communications, recording of classes, meetings, presentations, training sending. Again, anything you wish to put up there is fine as long as it's in video format. So let's talk about how to sign on to your Office 365. What I find wonderful is I have more help requests on how to sign in than I do once they're actually in. So that means the utility is good. You just have to be clear on where your account is. So Microsoft has a long history of Microsoft accounts back to Hotmail. So your Hotmail email account, there was MSN email accounts for a long time. Now there's Outlook accounts. Regardless, all of those are the beginning of Microsoft. So now, as you log in, let's say you have a, uh, an Outlook account that's a private account, and then your company goes to 365, it's going to recognize that you have an account on two different platforms. The work school account is completely separate from the Microsoft account. These are the personal ones, as I said, like the equivalent of the old Hotmail. So what happens is when you sign in and you type in your email address, it's going to look that up. And if and only if you also have a personal Microsoft account, you're going to be presented by this choice. Now, if you're signing in for work and you know your domain name is in there, you always want to pick work or school account, always. And they say school accounts because Microsoft is now giving Office 365 to all of the college students for free. So most colleges and universities are also using 365. So again, if it's a work-based account, you're always going to pick the top one. If you pick the bottom one on accident, and you continue to log in, it won't give you anything that you expect. So understand that's probably what went wrong. In terms of the URL, I always, always, always just go direct to office365.com and I look for sign in at the top right. You will find a whole bunch of URLs. One of them is portal.microsoft.com, I believe. There's office.com. There's tons of them. And all roads here lead to Rome. So I just go directly to that one and it always works. But if you have a different URL and the screens look the same, you're probably in the same spot. And you'll see even here, I typed in office365.com and you'll see the URL as soon as I hit enter immediately changed to office.microsoft.com. How to find help is very, very easy. 
if you are in the login screen, meaning when you first log on to Office 365, you will have your profile picture, and then right next to it is a big question mark. That is help. So what you want to do is give it a click, and it's going to bring you right into this particular spot where you can search help for anything you wish. You can go to the community, and of course, these are just your legal and, and privacy disclaimers. So this is really more of a community where people are talking and submitting and, and really helping each other out. Or, of course, you can simply just search help by clicking right here, and it's going to try to lead you to the right article. There's a lot of defaults in Office 365 that you get to set. So we're going to look here in Office 365. We click on the gear. We click on Options. And when you do so, notice right here, you can start setting some defaults on how you want your programs to work. Now, these particular options are going to, in this case, be specific to Outlook. And you'll see I've got items like automatic processing or the email accounts that will be pulled in. So even though I have an Office 365 account, which is Sandra at my domain, I can also pull in a lot of other email. So an example, I have a Gmail account I use for other functions. I have a couple other alias accounts that I use for other functions. I can actually go into connected accounts and I can add them all in so all my mail pulls into one location. Some of the other defaults that you'll look at, we have ones like clutter. So what clutter is all about is in my email every day, and I know I am not alone, I have two types of email. Some is sent specifically to me, and I'll call them from humans, meaning someone is communicating with me and actually typed the message, and then the other ones are newsletters or the equivalent. Something that I subscribe to, something that's an advertisement, something from a service that I run, maybe it's a Microsoft Office 365 automated email telling me about a new feature. Regardless, they separate that. And they have regular mail, and then anything that falls in this category is called clutter, which I actually like the feature because I read all of this first, and once I'm done reading this, I can then move on to this time permitting. You can also set defaults on whether or not you want read receipts, different settings for when you reply. You can look at how you're going to do junk email reporting, and they're just setting up some defaults for how you're going to use Office 365. News feeds is an interesting topic. I like to bring it up, but what I can say is as of the taping of this class, they're actually doing some changes with news feeds. So you might need to look at the subscription as you have it and figure out where it is or how you're going to use it. And what I really mean about that is Office 365 always had a tile for news feeds. Then we have Yammer, which is basically a newsfeed social network for business. Microsoft buys out Yammer, and then in the options for whoever set up Office 365, they could pick either newsfeeds or Yammer. And it was an actual choice that allowed someone to use one or the other company-wide, meaning it's a company-wide decision. Now they have social engagement, which is also something that's coming in. So we'll talk about what the feature is and say that, you know, you really can find it in a lot of places. Sometimes now we have a utility called Delve, and Delve absorbed a lot of the newsfeed options. But if you're using the SharePoint sites in Office 365, you can put a news feed right in there as well. So the concept is exactly the same. You just might find on your subscription it lands in a different place. So they do move it around. It is very handy. You can communicate, have news feeds, have blogs for each user. And in this is a case that in the news feed area, there's always going to be an about me. Whatever you have in About Me is going to be your public profile for anyone who looks you up or communicates you with a news feed. So you might want to find that and make sure the About Me says exactly what you want it to say about you. So let's talk a little bit about status or presence information. When someone logs in, if they're available, and I say if because we haven't gone through the different statuses yet, you're going to see that there is a colored bar to their left of their picture. That is currently their status. Now, if you get an email from that person, it actually is going to be a little square in whatever color represents it next to their name. 
And what it's trying to tell you is if that person is available. Nowadays, you can actually use either Skype for Business, sometimes you can use the online version of Skype for Business, or even in Outlook Web Access, you'll find there are some different ways where you can instant message someone. So you want to see if they're available. Now, if in this case, Sandra Batakis had a calendar appointment and she was in a meeting from 1 to 2 and it's 1.30, automatically it's going to list this as busy. So you're going to see red, not necessarily blue. In fact, the next time you put something in your calendar of Office 365, you'll see there's a field that says show times as and the default is busy which directly writes to this right here in your status. So I can look up at any time, see who's busy, who's not busy. Um, we do have the do not disturb. You can manually set your own to do not disturb, be right back. You can appear away. And if you've been logged into Office 365 for a period of time but you haven't done anything, essentially your connection is idle, it's going to actually look like you're away anyways and you'll see that as well. Now, if you log into Office 365, you know your profile picture appears here. The status bar is right there. If you click on the status bar, you will actually get the menu that you see right here. And what I want you to pay attention to is if you don't want to play that game at all, click on Sign Out of IM. And if you decide it's time to communicate, you can actually click in the same spot and it turns to Sign In to IM. So you hear the term SharePoint quite often, and I know people have all heard the term. When I communicate, I talk to my customers about 365, and still not a lot of people understand what it is. I personally love SharePoint and everything it has to offer and spend a good portion of my time in it, either creating sites for people or using them for my own business. A SharePoint site is an actual web page. Think of it as a personal web page, or better yet, a personal website, which means potentially more than one page. It is a company-based website where you can share data. Now, you could have a little bit of panic thinking, I don't know how to write a website. That's what's great about SharePoint. If you want to insert a list or a blog, if you want a list of pictures or a picture library or a document library to put a whole bunch of documents, it literally is as easy as clicking a mouse, going to the Insert menu, and choosing it. There is a little bit of knowledge on the design and what types of objects you can put in, but for the most part, it is very end user friendly. SharePoint by default has two sites. It has a public site and a team site. The team site is your company intranet and the public site can be turned into a company based website. Obviously, there'll be some customization before that happens. Sites can also be created by an employee who has the right permission. A lot of the sub sites that are created can be by individual employee. It can be by department or it could be certain types of company information like the help desk.